for webcams and for the uh, people joining us on YouTube I would like to let them know that Parameterize 3.0 was a five day of rigorous working with computational design and parametric architecture and we all began with with ground zero of uh, parametric architecture and through through the course of these five days followed by one week of uh, competition exercise uh, we have reached to a, to an intermediate level where we can start designing the buildings where we can start exploring the computational forms that this particular style has to offer and we also have architect Vidhi Bhardwaj with us um, she's the co-founder of Equim and she heads the design studio at Equim so her style is to stay minimal in terms of the design aesthetics and promote parametric architecture by fusing it with vernacular architecture itself welcome Vidhi how are you doing very well thank you so uh, I think we are good to go and uh, let's begin with the first group. So I would invite Parmeshwari, Parth, Sudhanshu, Soumya. Okay, before we begin with the group, the exercise, let me just introduce the exercise as well. The exercise was to design a resort in Greater Noida at a site that had uh, 20, almost 20 acres of uh, plot area <clears throat> that had Yamuna River towards flowing on the northern side of the site and the resort was to be designed in a way where the plants the floor plants were not to be taken in consideration rather than the overall placement of the structures along with how the landscaping is being done how the movement on the site is being regulated and, and how the form is being directed through these computational tools that we have learned in just the five days or of this particular workshop so uh, i would go ahead and invite group one that's parmeshwari bose parth gore asudhanchu somya shri venkatesh and poor so um, one of you please go ahead and share your screen and we can begin with your presentation yeah yes uh Yeah, sure, sure, go on. So the function, if you see the excluded layers on the most bottom, we have the basement in which it has parking. Then on the ground floor, we have bar club, restaurant, gym, spa, admin. Then on the G plus one layer, we have the whole multipurpose hall. Then on G plus two, it is a whole food forest for the permaculture in which all the landscaping is done. Instead of this aesthetics landscaping, we incorporated the food forest. Then in the tower, the, the, in the goddess, it's all the lodging. So these are the functions. After that, plants. 
so we have this is our site on the northern side we have we are uh, blessed to have a river on the northern side so this is how our site is it, it's converted into layers so if, if so if you see this is uh, the basement and the basement is connected through a ramp which goes and it also uh, exits into a loop so there is a free flow then after that this is a ground level in which the movement is free flowing there is no restriction in the movement and the green patches you see these are all the columns the mushroom column. after that this is a g plus 2 floor in which you also have a random free flowing space after after that on the top layer you see these blue hatches these bl these blue hatches are the ponds and the flow is all random the tar so the orientation of tar the tar is oriented the the geometry of tar is like that so we have to minimize the energy consumption that will be used in the tar so we keep it in in a east to west linear form so that the minimum harsh west and east sun enters it and we don't have to use material in making panels for the west facade so we minimize the surface area and we maximize the surface area on south and the north facade so that we can have the diffuse light from the north and the uh, south facade can be used as winter sun in winter and can be shaded by horizontal projection in summer so this is the geometry and orientation of the form and the aesthetics of the form is derived from the woman figure that is the yamuna goddess which is uh, the form is all united it's one then for the facade for the su southern facade it, the horizontal floors is projected so that the winter sun cannot come can come in the rooms and in the summer it is restricted now the sustainability you see these ponds so the geometry of the layer of the g plus 2 layer is such that the contours are such that all the water will flow into into these ponds these craters and from these craters it will go to the ground water recharge so it will recharge the ground level and it will also be harvested in the rain water tank and the, when the ponds are full the water will be directed to the yamuna river now this is the g plus 2 layer in which all the food forest is incorporated now the renderings this is what you will see when you will arrive at the yamuna kenara this is the experience of the food forest on the g plus 2 level it's all jungle we chose we have chosen food forest because it maintains itself it requires if you create a lawn it lawn requires a lot of maintenance and a forest it's itself it's an ecosystem this is the vast experience be at the feet of the goddess that is on the base so this is the uh, script process how we made this in the grasshopper so basically our form is united everything is one this tower is is the most focused form in which everything is getting dissolved the form the the tower is the main focus and its her base is where the mostly uh, interactive places are so the lodging is in the tar you have to go to the tar to sleep and the and rest of the time you have to be on the site so you have to interact with people it's a very interactive space it 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 does not restrict it 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 is free flowing all remove all the foundations thank you it was a very nice presentation sudhanshu uh hello yeah yeah uh, actually the thing i noticed was uh, why have you not worked much on your um 
facade development on the main tower of your building all right i will write to justify that yeah. i i because first of all i if we add panels to it we can have a very fancy geometry i accept that but if the our my first if we uh, get a step back before that if we make our geometry so that we don't require those panels so we can so the geometry is like that so why do we need panels on a on a building on a facade so what we need it because we want to shade sun so what if we create a geometry which itself is a shading device so we minimize the amount of panel which will be on this west side and the east side so we don't really need these panels vertical vertical panels and the horizontal shading is done through the projections which are all all the floors on the southern side so that is and also for the aesthetics part i want we wanted to keep this as minimal and as modest and as elegant as possible so uh, sudanshu if i may ask a question here so sure. i believe there are uh, so all the activities that were to be designed the gym yeah. the spa the the commercial yeah. area and the lodging area yeah. uh, are they all integrated in the one single built mass exactly so if you see this floor this this, this free flowing floor now if 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 i talk about a bar for take an example so how we will define this space how we will uh, define the boundary of this space is this what you are asking yeah so uh, i mean uh, usually when there are yeah. multiple activities going on in such yeah. a big site we yeah. and since it's it's i mean it's un, again completely up to your concept but yeah. usually when uh, when the site is near a river or something we try yeah. to develop a resort sort of feeling in it so okay. dividing those activities utilizing the entire site so yeah. uh, covering the entire site what was the motive with uh, why did you want to cover the entire site with 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 a construction built mass okay so first of all there if i open the layers right so the reason of covering the entire site is that if if i am not making these two layers i will obviously have so uh, we have the open for food forest on the top floor which is actually uh, making the site open and on the bottom too i wanted to create if if you see this concept when we go under the water it is a complete different dimension we it's a different medium so i, I wanted we wanted to create this different dimension in the base in which every space is kind of united and dissolved and if you ask me if when i hadn't create that uh, functions so if i give you an example what where will the bar come because it's all it's all one the space is one so a, a bar counter can be created as like a form is flowing and the counter became the part of the surface only so it it is not worked out in this but if if i say how this function will be distributed it is like that every every the, the whole form is united nothing is different from anything so everything is emerging from it so if i ask you uh, answer your question why we uh, uh, capture the whole side so actually the whole side is not captured because the top layer is all open <laughs> okay yeah. i think that would be all from my side vidhi yeah i think uh, the concept you have created is really very nice you have done layering so it will also do the heat distribution all these things are very nice but only one thing that concerns me is that yeah. you should have worked a bit more on your main tower facade as it looks very nice it is minimal but yes there's still a scope of some work on that okay. it looks a bit incomplete though okay so uh, so danchu how many people uh, were there? did you design this alone i believe there were six people in the group so uh, did you do this alone um most i i mean uh, around 60 to 70 percent okay mm -hmm. great good work so danchu okay thank, okay thank uh, moving on to the next group that's hriday yash shitej laksh manali rupin uh one of you can start the screen yeah, screen yeah so i will share the screen just so is my screen visible yes sir there we can see okay uh, so a very good morning to all the participants and the jury members 
I am Manali Bhattacharya, and on behalf of Group Two, let me take you on a virtual tour of Fluid Retreat. Um, are there next? Okay, so as we can see from the diagram, our site was adjoining the river Yamuna. So the very first thing when you come to a site and you see the site context is what are the adjoining boundaries? What are you actually, uh, you know, verifying with? So having river on one side is a very uh, huge uh, advantage. and we wanted to use that advantage not only to our design not only to construct a very uh, harmonious uh, design on the site but also for our concept as well so we thought that when we have a river and when we have that very harmonious wave fluid like nature of the river flowing why not take it inside not only virtually in terms of your virtual representation of the water body but also in terms of levels and in terms of privacy so the first thing that we did was divide the site divide the zoning in the levels in a fluidic form so the first thing that we started was to uh, decode the brief what all the brief requires the brief requires a accommodation of a seven star hotel the brief requires amenities uh, the brief requires basic uh, you know admin bodies and then there was the site circulation which was the major part now as we all can see the site is huge in nature and it being a resort we thought that why not cover and utilize the site horizontally more than going vertically but then again there comes a point of the site context the beautiful river yamuna and the adjoining panoramic city views that we wanted to also portray so our basic concept was for those paying guests who will be actually residing at a seven star hotel we need to give them some advantage over the ones who are there for a one day purpose or a one day workshop so while dividing the zoning itself we started contouring it we started using the yamuna wave like flow in our wave like zoning as well starting with the promenade which is a very public area so the promenade is at the lowest level of our site which also kind of gels with the river in such a way that we are integrating a water body which we will see in the next slide so that we create a visual uh, continuation of the form of the entire site it's not just the river is going around the site but it is also like the river is coming in and going out so river has a connection directly to our site directly to our design so it is like in a harmonious flow like manner the second uh, the second zone was a semi private now this was our most favorite while designing and the most uh, uh, area where we could actually experiment a lot because this is again the zone where one day visitors would also come plus the ones who are staying in a hotel would also like to kind of experiment with because you are there for 2 3 days so why not use all the facilities of the i mean the campus so that was our major attraction and that is where we actually went bonkers with the script and what we want to place over there and how we want to design it the third part was the accommodation which was the private sector now keeping the accommodation part in mind we kept it at the top level again giving it a hierarchy of a level difference in the zone as well the entire zone is private in nature hello सही है, है। बहुत लग रहा। I think someone's mic is on. If you guys can put yourself on mute, apart from who whoever is speaking. Yeah, sure. yeah please continue, Manali. Okay, so the private zone is uh, again put at a hierarchical topmost position. Now this has advantage in terms of giving it a privacy that the people on this level can see whatever is happening on the bottom most level. Again, they have visual connectivity, but the ones who are experiencing, which will be a lot. you know the users of the semi private will be more in number than the users in the private zone these guys and their activities will not be affecting in any way shape or form to the private zone so that was our major aim to keeping them on a topmost level again the privacy and the scenic views of the city that was our play of contours moving on uh as we can see we wanted to not only keep our build structure to one and constrained part of the site but we wanted to kind of spread it along so that the campus and the users of the campus can actually explore what the campus has to provide them again this is some sort of eco resort which means it it is balancing which means it is sustainable in nature not only in terms of its build mass but the landscape as well so when we wanted to design the campus we purposely Ura. kept some part of it uh, at a you know walkable distance to say 300 to 350 meters apart where even if i am engaged Itna. just taking Bara. a peaceful stroll in the campus i would still see a structure which is parametrically designed or can you please mute yourself uh, which is parametrically designed and i will be as a user engaged to move over towards there so that is a curiosity aspect attached to it so uh, then we started the actual zoning and then we started the actual process of the uh, like the designers process so starting with the very first uh, entrance 
now we did not want to being at a huge site the one thought that comes to your mind is let us have multiple entrances but that what it does is kind of deviates our uh, privacy and security purpose so instead we went with one entrance which again then uh, you know uh, in the later stages kind of diverges into different functions so one entrance giving it maximum security maximum like eyes on the one gate that you have and then depending on what you are here what you are here to explore in the campus is it a one day workshop a yoga retreat or to actually stay in the hotel you then move forward and kind of divert yourself into the lanes that we have the first lane that is adjoining to the uh, the 24 meter road boundary is the one that is a very private lane which takes you to directly to the drop off point of the towers so your entire lane from one that is the gate to the two that is the tower is very private in nature along the lane you will virtually and via your sense of vision you will kind of experiment uh, kind of experience the parametric nature of the campus so the gate itself is designed in a way that your eye is captivated and while you are moving along the uh, while you are moving along the road you see that there are a lot of uh, forms that are happening but you still do not know what these forms are doing so you are kind of engaged in the nature yet the entire uh, suspense of the river as the river view is not yet disclosed to you so while you are moving you see there are some things happening at 4 at 7 you want to experiment but first let's just go and drop off our luggage so that's what you do you go to the tower that is the seventh point or uh, sorry second point you drop off your luggage and then you are taken to your all your uh, private amenities now being it a seven star hotel we all know that a lot of amenities are provided in one bar, uh, one block itself but then again how do we ensure that not only you get a lot of uh, amenities out of facilities out of your seven star stay but again we want you to experience the entire campus to see it in its entirety the landscape and the built mass as well and the water uh, body as well so apart from giving the facilities not only in the tower blocks we also kind of laid it horizontally and on contour levels in the form of a beautiful landscape so even when you are in your room you can see that there are a lot of activities happening on campus and you are intrigued to go and visit it even if you don't have to per se then coming to the uh, then coming to the semi private zone so if you are here for a one day retreat you are uh, kindly uh, obliged to go through the next route which takes you beautifully through the landscape so this is a contour site now you are entering at level 8 and you are moving towards level 6 so once you are moving not only you are coming down i'm sorry rupin am i a little fast okay uh, not only you are coming down the contours but also you are experiencing what the landscape and the built mass has to give you so while you are going towards your semi amenities admin area you see a lot of things unrevealing you see a water body you see a parametric structure which is kind of a pavilion but you are still not sure that what that pavilion holds what is the function of that pavilion so towards that you start moving and while your eye is engaged in all the activities happening on the site you kind of made up your mind ke yaar main yahan to jaane hi wala hu this is where i want to go this is very intriguing i want to try what this place has to offer so once you are moving that road you enter the semi private zone where you are taken to the admin and then you register yourself whether you are here for like what all activities that the campus has to offer and then your activity starts to unfold so uh, uh, that's the journey of a user that happens once you enter the site now reading the entire uh, site map the first is the entrance gate which is again parametrically designed to engage the user the two uh, mark two are towers now as you can see the three the three is a sky walk again having a water body so water body being a major feature of this site as such what we did was let us not just restrict the water body to the shore why is yamuna only on the beach why is there is only a promenade that is enjoying the water body no we want to bring the water body inside the site let's have a visual connectivity there now when your water body is coming inside the site it is at the same level still so let us take that a level up so once you are in the sky gardens of the tower 2 not only you are enjoying the visual connectivity of the water body at the sky level at the level that is the 7th which is the amenities block and the level of yamuna so basically your eye is now kind of settled in watching a lot of water bodies but all these water bodies are performing different functionalities so again there is a lot of things that are kind of uh, activating your senses and as you as and when you start to experience the campus you see what all you want to do what all you want to wear all you want to go uh, coming to the fourth number which is uh, sorry the multi utility space now a lot of times it happens that you visit a resort and everything is indoors but why if your site is such beautifully placed let us give more uh, ex user experience to the semi open spaces again parametrics is something that am i going to fast no go ahead 
uh, again parametrics is something which gives you a lot of experimentations in your semi open spaces we have a different kind of perforations that we can provide so why not use those perforations to engage more users to captivate more users and major aim was to keep maximum users in the semi open zone keep them engaged that they don't want to leave that place that they just feel serene in the place that they are i mean that will be in its true sense an eco resort so that is what we try to do with our uh, amenities uh, area coming to the fifth which is alfresco dining again when you are in a beautiful campus you have open open air library you have yoga retreat center you have a lot of workshops going on why would you still want to like sit in an enclosed space and eat rather go out enjoy the beautiful water body enjoy the activities happening around so alfresco was the perfect uh, uh, example for us to have an cafeteria which is open to air uh, the sixth one is our amenities now I Amenities we did not restrict according to functions. Rather, we restricted according to what the functions are using that space for. So we have in our amenities yoga retreat center. We have open open libraries, and you will not kind of unless and until you enter that space, you will not realize what kind of activities happening there. You will just be intrigued by the gazebo form of it. So you want to go there, and then you will see okay, this is what is happening over here. Uh, coming to our restaurant, which is the A. So the restaurant is again a part where if you don't prefer, if you are like very tired and if you don't want to explore everything on day one, you just come here, relax, sit on an enclosed space, have your dinner, and that is that is the flexibility that we're providing to our users. If you want, you can have it in the open air dining. If you want it, you can have it in an enclosed space. This is something that uh, we uh, took care of. And then again, ninth is a drop off zone. This is the entire site and its uh, circulation. Moving on. नेक्स्ट स्लाइड है रेदा या सो सो द गेट वी डिजाइन इट पैरामेट्रिक पैरामेट्रिकली टू गिव एन आईडिया टू व्हाट इज व्हाट द साइट होल्ड सो यू नो दिस दिस ग्रैंड एंट्रेंस ऑलरेडी गिव्स अस द आईडिया ऑफ व्हाट व्हाट्स गोइंग टू बी इन द साइट फर्दर सो द दिस पार्ट फर्दर डिवर्जेस इनटू टू Uh, lanes with the private lane leads to the seven star hotel and the seven uh, semi private zone uh, path leads towards the amenities area and uh, other the water feature and all we saw uh, yeah and also we kept the uh, entrance to be singular to uh, make make it more secure and the entrance as manali pointed out we have it at a level uh, bit up and then we is uh, kind of explore the site uh, going down yeah so the next slide please uh the uh, time's we'll... running out if you could uh, yeah, yeah yeah so speed, speed it up it. a little so uh, for accommodation uh, we have uh, tried to uh, reflect our uh, concept of uh, fluidic nature uh, of adjoining rivers uh, in our uh, design of fluid retreat we have uh, provided a retreat at higher level for better visualization each floor plate has three rooms uh, with overall uh, 24 floors we have twisted the tower so that everyone can enjoy the panoramic scenic view of the context also a parametric facade is provided to avoid uh, harsh sunlight so uh, we have provided a uh, provided amenities at the top of uh, the tower uh, so that um, not only you can uh, enjoy the view but also uh, you can enjoy the water body at a higher level yeah. now we have the multi use sheds that you can see on the top left corner of the slide <laughs> and there are a series of open uh, semi open spaces that are located right next to the extended water channels as well as the river so uh, the space uh, these spaces are conveniently located such uh, uh, located uh, within the uh, semi public zones where uh, where they get a scenic uh, view of uh, of our site the resort as well as the river then the special organization has been done in order to ma uh, make them more interactive as you can see within the uh, picture and all of this makes them an attractive option for temporal activities such as workshop and cultural events for which they can be rented now on the uh, right, uh, right hand side you have uh, of the water channels you have uh, the alfresco dining which you can also see on the uh, uh, top right corner of the slide 
so uh, along with our restaurant which manali pointed out was uh, next to our uh, uh, the accommodation area we also have a semi open uh, space for dining as well as other spontaneous activities <coughs> uh, uh, within the semi open spaces so uh, uh, and because uh, like they are for spontaneous activities as well as uh, 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 dining activities so they have been given ace accessibility uh, 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 with relation to accommodation as well as other activity spaces that are located within the water channel then uh, the dynamic roof profile enhances the user engagement within these spaces which adds to the experience of luxury dining and now after this we have rupan talking about the activity balls next slide so basically these uh, activity balls are uh, nothing but the spaces created for the amenities so amenities like gyms spa and the other things like the uh, maybe we can have the yoga center over here so just imagine we are doing gym and the spa and, uh, and the yoga in between the water body so also the openings are made in the uh, structure so that we can have the view from this uh, uh, activity balls so go ahead yeah so basically there are three activity balls which are placed so this is how we have tried to connect them so uh, we can walk through this bridges to go through different activity balls or different functions of the amenities so that's how about the amenities so. next yeah these yeah, are the so various scripts which we have used for the uh, modeling the grasshopper so sir can i quickly uh, share our uh, poster as well sure so yeah. uh, meanwhile vidhi if uh, please go ahead and uh, please begin with your questions this so this is our poster and i'll just get back to the people okay okay uh i mean the oh, the theme overall looks coherent so that's really nice and i really appreciate the fact that you guys tried to explore uh, various different methodologies to develop forms not only the facades uh, the theme overall looks coherent that's good the only thing that concerns me if you could go on to the towers uh, elevation the the facade of the tower so yeah this one so uh, twisting it did not i did not i do not think it would have solved much of a purpose of uh, maximizing the views uh, and also uh, the perforations made on the facade i do not think they would offer much of a solar uh, cut off uh, but apart from that the scale of the, the you guys have maintained the overall proportion uh, the site looks coherent the design style looks coherent so good work good effort Uh, so actually our skin is uh, uh, is uh, uh, from a little bit of an offset from the uh, the tower and lab so because of that uh, it uh, really reduces the amount of direct radiation uh, within the uh, within the interior spaces actually okay so uh, maybe yes. maybe a blow up of that would have made more sense uh, also uh, i did not Uh, see much of a sustainability input in it or or some vernacular input in it uh, but but again it's it's an overall very nice concept and uh, key factors key principles are being taken into account so that's very good so for uh, vernacularity we have uh, tried to uh, provide uh, a feature uh, architectural feature of um, uh, courtyards so we have created some abstract courtyards where, uh, between our amenities so we have uh, incorporated that in such a way so in a abstract way and uh, for the uh, twisting of towers we have tried to give uh, a uh, a singular design um, concept of fluidity so for, if we see in our in our first second sheet we have tried to uh, we have tried to uh, keep a uh, fluid uh, form of uh, everything of uh, of zoning as well as our build forms so and uh, we have provided each room in 
uh, one of this circle so everyone gets a, a view of um, okay uh, the river and we have kept it at a um, hi- higher level so that uh, no space uh, uh, disturbs the view okay that's nice and uh, i think we'll move on to the next group because time is running out and uh, good work good effort team so uh, moving on to the third group yuvraj kirat shrusti akhil baljit and anushka uh, one of you please go ahead and share the screen also please ensure that you are finishing up your presentation in around 12 13 14 minutes uh you're not audible whoever screen this is baljeet hello baljeet baljeet you are not audible hello so someone else from her group can take up the presentation uh hello yeah sorry for the inconvenience hello like, there were some network issues so hi this hello. is group 3 and hello yes baljeet we can hear you go on okay okay sir so good morning everyone sorry for the inconvenience this is baljeet kaur presenting group 3 now so i'll start by explaining the site location the name of our site is the aqua the site is in greater noida okay. The site is in Greater Noida and is lo- located along Yamuna River. The site is north-south oriented and is derived from a concept where our main aim is to integrate water and architecture sustainably and functionally. So here, water is giving a fluidity touch and in and is acting as a horizontal circulation, whereas pebbles along with the water stream is acting as a vert- vertical circulation. And the pebbles along the vertical uh, Uh, and the pebbles along the water stream is acting as a vertical circulation and as a built up area so uh, these are the uh, program analysis which we have done uh, for our resort and these are the hotel facts and uh, these are the uh, target groups so which are going to perform these activities and uh, next slide and uh, it is a zoning and uh, the zoning is uh, done according to the uh, user group and uh, the site is oriented toward north side uh, north south so we try to uh, give the concept of fluidity along in the circulation as well as in the building form next slide so this is our uh, gallery area and uh, zoning site please baljeet zoning zoning one S- zoning one hmm. so uh, this is our uh, main site so main entrance uh, uh, is uh, so yeah so basically the site was the, divided into particularly zones like the resort hotel and different functionality but we tried to create a kind of flow that would be justified by the concept baljeet go ahead with the concept first okay so the wa- here the water is the main stream along with the pebbles and the pebbles here are acting as a structure hello yeah yeah go on so the next is the hotel block so uh, in hotel block the lower part of the hotel is designed to serve all day multi cuisine dinner restaurants and exclusive bar areas 
along with a triple height lobby uh, for vip waiting areas boardrooms and admin area and uh, we have created a towers where uh, these two towers are acting for hotel rooms and these uh, and central core is running throughout along with this tower a sky bridge is connecting both these towers where uh, the lower part is also acting as a foundation member for these high rise structures shristi okay so this is the clubhouse and gym area uh, in which we try to create a, a sustainable design strategies like the main of the building is to provide a natural lighting and uh, ventilation in it and we try to give the interior structure which is made up of timber so uh, the structure will also uh, show uh, uh, the vernacular terms and uh, this is the uh, interior sectional view that shows that how the uh, parametrized structure is uh, self dependent and it is carrying the load and uh, we also try to represent the concept to, uh, along with the site and the circulation as well as in the building facades like this uh, roof is uh, representing the round curve uh, wave structure the fluidity continuous flow, flow in our building next slide so this is the basic uh, geometry which we try to introduce then this is uh, the 3d model uh, this is the main basic structure that holds the uh, whole building and uh, the basic uh, this one is the basic uh, structure which is covered by the glass curtain wall and uh, then we try to create a uh, flow plate so uh, which is also in a curve and wavy form that will represent our uh, context uh, that is surrounded by the site and these are the scripts which we have done for this structure next uh, this is this was a particularly interesting form like the form we got a concept of flowing waters and with the flowing water there comes shells stones and pebbles and many other elements of the natural uh, existence so this was a bar design which was accumulated with flow and spacious design with a triple height ceiling so it has a vertical core and this was a basically a night view rendered so illumination and uh, next slide please hey who oh. You're on mute, Akhil. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is I mean, okay. please conclude, Balji. Tan group. Okay, sir. So. Uh, is that all baljeet yes sir okay Thank great you. uh vidhi i would like yeah. to open the grounds to some questions yeah i think uh, these forms uh, you have used for landscaping too do not go very well with the main towers okay ma'am yeah the main towers are like uh, elongated So, what is the material you have chosen for the facade treatment of this tower? For the hotel one. Yeah, yeah, for the hotels. Okay, so ma'am, this is a Raven size poster, and for hotel one, we have chosen prefabricated material for the panels and a diagrid structure for the towers. Okay. okay. Brick and uh, steel. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. that's the thing that's the steel and all that is not going with the with these forms you have developed on your ground for landscaping okay that is not actually merging together the rest it is uh, it is quite well but i think you should have worked on the roofing of the building you have created the roofing and the interiors also do not merge together that the thing is individually everything looks good but when you put it all together it kind of imbalances all for the whole site okay got it. yeah yeah 
and also uh, i would have loved to see a, a bit more detailed study of the tower itself because that was the main function of the site to to have a seven star hotel uh, uh, but good effort here the the site is a bit incoherent so that's uh, that's what i would say so uh, maybe when we are developing uh, and we learn these new tech new tech and new methods of designing we try to implement all all of them into one so that's sometime uh, that that sometimes results into incoherent structures so that's something that you need to work on uh, with time okay so we will keep that in mind thank sure. you great thank you uh, uh, let's move on to group 4 that's shatrugan somya raj Ellen Shizian, Basav, and Akankshita. Raj, you there? Just a second. Sure. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Hello. Good afternoon, all of you. So our. Uh, Can you speak up a bit louder? Yeah. Hello. Is it audible? Yeah. 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 so uh, we have named the uh, uh, name this project as a par parasionis be, uh, because of the, uh, it's uh, refers to a greek uh, and it's mean a green a future of resort next slide yeah the here the if we talk about the concept development so we have taken the uh, uh, concept of feng shui model or you can say where the uh, where a yin yang uh, will connect the five element basic element of the nature that uh, is the river uh, the wood the water uh, the earth and the fire and uh, and the uh, this whole is united through this seeing young so if you talk in uh, next slide uh, yeah if you talk about the conceptual sketches and how it, the site has been developed so uh, in indian tradition you know the river is um, mostly uh, uh, sacred sacred or um, sacred you can say and the people go to river front to enjoy their life so we have created a kind of access we are something like uh, you go at a river front and also we have given a space where you feel like a resort and one uh, also we have given a place uh, like one feel like uh, say, uh, standing on a deck and uh, just going to catch a boat or something so there are many purpose that uh, that are uh, uh, dealed with the modern scenario the river front development you can say so here we take uh, taken the yin yang concept as a, something like green having a a no uh, tree uh, with uh, or no shed or no tree and the uh, white portion you can see which is a concrete having a green tree so it's a kind of uh, yin yang module uh, interpretation and uh, next slide hello yeah if we talk about the main building that is a, a main building not we can say this uh, as a uh, one uh, the, that containing the uh, clubhouse restaurant and bar this buildings uh, in a plan you can see uh, it's like a fire okay and the journey start with a uh, you just start with a wood uh, forest and just you see a focal point a river and when you reach there uh, there is a uh, this building uh, which look uh, which looks like in a plan like a fire and in a in if in a reflection from yamuna river you can see like a triangle this uh, triangle represent the uh, actual the form of the fire so the uh, the this uh, uh, this building having a bar restaurant are uh, represented at triangular building so next slide 
unite my building with my concept and to create a unique flow and a unique design recreational block uh, which uh, which has the spa gym and multi purpose hall it designed in such a way to uh, to rejuvenate the spirits of the people so whosoever wishes to come here actually visits it and uplifts their energy and also the one who don't want to uh, come to the gym or spa they they will want to come after seeing the after seeing the building there is a gazebo that we designed for sustainability to ensure the building was self sufficient and economic, economically viable it was de- designed decided to generate electricity using natural gas a cost effective co generation system was adopted to minimize energy consumption the building's orientation was set in north south direction which ensured maximum wind and uh, desired sunlight while blocking excessive heat an aerodynamic phase uh, shape was chosen for the structure that would allow free flow of the build, building a uh, free flow of the wind thus uh, ensuring the exterior surface remained cooler than its surrounding glass panels were fitted with double glazing to avoid excessive heat absorption zero discharge water cycle was incorporated so that waste water could be reused for landscaping and cooling purposes the built and surrounding environments were given priority in design process the use of locally available materials and efficient building materials at noida take it a step closer to a net zero skyscraper so you can see how i developed the facade uh, the petal facade for my building we are basically uh, it's a two way facade uh, we have the bigger petals at the back and the smaller petals at the front and we can adjust it accordingly so that we can have the light and the air flow now uh, the circulation from uh, the circulation uh, the main entry road divides into two parts one will take you to the hotel directly to the hotel and the other will take you directly to the admin block. and the other will take you to the admin block we have the uh, recreation block at the back end of the side the admin block uh, uh, is placed in front of the river uh, placed in front of the river to have a which is our main focus point <clears throat> moving ahead i will like to present the landscaping we have uh, Try to focus on the center with the yin yang symbol. We have created a garden and uh, 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 and a jogging and walking path for everyone, so so that it unifies our building forms and our, all our designs to create a harmony among uh, in the site. This is the site plan. Now I would hand over the mic to Akanchita. Ah, uh, very good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Satrugan. Now I'd like to take you all to this amazing journey along the site. So the layout of the site is pretty much coherent with the existing five elements, as we can see. It speaks the language of Feng Shui, if I may. Now, starting from the entrance, as Mr. Satrugan pointed out, the site opens up to two pathways. True, that circulates the entire site conventionally. Traveling straight towards the north, you will be led up to the Ghat Kam Beach opening. which also opens up to recreational activities like volleyball and overall beach experience now lying on the route are badminton and establishments of bar restaurant and admin block the shape of the bar restaurant and admin block represents the symbol of fire the layout is beautifully linked with the five elements now traveling east from the entrance open to experience the centrally located pool along with centrally located yin and yang providing a visual connection and balance throughout the entire site a little further east turning up towards the north there exists recreational area the flowing structure forms a link with the yamuna that creates a blissful experience moving along with the journey towards the north the extreme point towards the site we are entwined by the majestic seven star hotel in all its glory 
The Pentagon structure building consists of facade with crisscross petals symbolizing love. Now the orientation of building is such that it gets proper light and ventilation. Now with the use of vernacular materials throughout the entire site, we try to create this balanced form of an orientation throughout the entire site, keeping it all natural and all green. Thank you. Here are some uh, visuals of the site. So this is our admin block. And this is a visual from the gazebo. This is a GH file of the tower that we designed. It's a pretty much long and complex GH file. And thanking you. Uh, if you could uh, bring back, yeah, okay. Let's let's stay here. So, Vidhi, I would love yes. to. Uh, let's have some questions here. Yeah. Uh, firstly, my first question is. Uh, why did you guys uh, include a building, a triangular building with edgy, uh, with regular edges? Another building, a streamlined building, wide streamlined building. The third building is elongated tower, just uh, right in the side of a very tiny gazebo. Yes. Yeah. So, help me understand what was your idea of merging these completely four different things together? So we wanted to Actually, create a uh, this yes. triangle. Speak, Raj. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this triangular building is here, representing a fire. Uh, when it reflected from the Yamuna, uh, when you go through both, and you will see a equilateral triangle director so a crisp ge geometry. Uh, so uh, we are trying to capture this geometry, uh, triangle, uh, equilateral triangle, uh, which is a very much in, uh, a solid form and if we uh, next uh, come to the sphere part it's also a, a sphere is also a geometrical part and this pentagon is also so we have taken this geometrical shape and merged this uh, 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 through this uh, flow of a uh, yin yang concept uh, we try to merge them and last you see the uh, the place where uh, where the kind of a uh, multi purpose area uh, which was like a tilted boat if you tilt a boat mm. and so something like a uh, 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 boat is crashed and just sided we wanted to create a uh, new uh, and mesmerizing so, uh, experience for the user yeah, so yeah. that's why we took six forms nice. the streamlined one the multi purpose space that looks individually that looks very nice but the thing is uh, when you design a building when you go inside a house just for example you don't like watching a uh, round wall, curved wall, right in front of a squared wall, right in front of a triangle wall. So it when you go in a space and there's a lot of things in just one single space, that kind of brings a hindrance to the eyes of the audience. So you have to design a site where everything, it is, you have Yamuna, Yamuna is fluidic. So yes. everything on the site, it, it should look like a fluid is running. Everything streamlined. Okay. Choose one kind of shape, either regular edges, unregular edges, rounded edges, anything you like. But choose one kind of thing. If you okay. go from triangle to small sphere to elongated uh, tower to streamlined body, it would just create a mishap. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And also, I would have loved to see a bit more. I mean, there were uh, the, you guys talked a lot about ground uh, revitalizing groundwater and. Uh, using natural gas to uh, to have the electricity supply. Uh, I don't think a hotel of this this magnitude can be supported. the The electric requirement can be supported using natural gas, not not by the current technologies available to us. Uh, and but also, yes, we will use low energy consumption uh, appliances. Okay, so. Uh, I would definitely have loved to see some of the structures for those or uh, if you are using so like Sudhanshu's group wanted to have groundwater reserve to collect the yes. rain and replenish the groundwater. So they had structures in place. So merely writing mm -hmm. it and then designing something for it is, is a yes. different thing. So that's what I would have appreciated to see overall really nice effort here. Uh, yes, both sir. of you, all three of you. Great. So let's move on to uh, group five. So that's Herschel, Jigger, 
Lakshita, Prerak, Malika, and Yash. Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I will be presenting my group. So, um, just a second, I'll share the screen. So, um, yeah, so um, the name of our project is the Bhishajya Resort. So the title came up uh, from Sanskrit. The Bhishajya word is a Sanskrit word which means healing. So the concept I'm starting is our site our structure which i have like which i with my along with my team built up is from infinity infinity of life the path of life is infinite in nature in today's world we often forget what we are going through and what is our life and our path so after all we all got to face a pandemic to understand this, right? So this is what we came up with. People often forget in our daily life that what is our life going through and what path is it? We don't really look back to our past from where we have come from, right? So here we tried to show that the life of a tree, tree, a plant is a symbol of life which we often represent. So here my structure has come up from the process of seed to a tree and then going back to seed. As you can see, this is the symbol, the main part of a concept which we came up with. And our structure has come up from this one. Sustainability of our site, which we have tried to incorporate is the services, the solar paneling to generate the electricity. And we provided a little bit of space for the rainwater harvesting. As you know, the site is in Greater Noida and it is a semi-arid as well as a subtropical area. So rainwater harvesting is one of the major factors which need to be looked after. Also, we try to reduce the carbon footprint by reducing the vehicular circulation on the site. Materials we use are bamboo, concrete, brick, tensile for brick, mud, and wood. So coming to the site. As I, as I mentioned before, semi-arid and subtropical, this is our site and taking you through our site. So this is our main entrance. The middle part, the central axis is our main entrance. We have tried to keep minimum circulation as much as possible to reduce the carbon footprint and try to connect with the river. So because we enter our life, as we enter our life, we need all four elements on earth. Air and water is one of the main ingredients. So for a food of life. And that's why we try to connect river along with the entrance as well. So that when you enter, you do not know there's a river, you only get to see the building, but then when you enter a bit more, then you get to see the view of the river as you approach the main place. The movement of the side. So, the movement, as you can see, that I explained before, the movement is very minimum. We haven't kept any kind of pavement or paved area to walk along the site because we wanted our, whoever is going to visit the site, we want people to involve more in nature and so that they can walk on grass if they want to. If not, there are paved areas they can use, but also we are keeping the option for 
walking on the grass as well as because this is a very important part as i said that our main topic is a healing a resort is for a healing purpose everybody tries to get away from their busy lifestyle and try to visit a resort or some kind some mountain or beach any kind of get get away is like a healing to everyone so a healing place can be of any type to anyone it depends from individual to individual that's why we try to keep up with the maximum green space and also paved area coming to the structures this is the structure we came up with as you can see the tallest tower is the tree and middle is the seed and left side of the building is the stem structure the branch you can say we tried to connect all three buildings with the roof structure which is kind of a mesh we derived from the roots or the shoots shoot and root is kind of a mirror image so we tried to incorporate that to connect all three of the buildings in the side this is the landscape we tried to generate as you can see i was talking about solar panels and the the space we tried to incorporate for rainwater harvesting as well is a landscape structure which is just beside the plant structure it is it is a structure which is actually connected to the ground as well as above so if people want they can walk up above as well of this structure we tried to make the structure totally involved in the landscape which people can have access to it's not big thing or so yes this is what we have planned and the resort we try to create is to approach a comfortable luxury lifestyle and a getaway just to have an experience of people to have a journey to look back to their journey to realize what they are actually going through and have the chance to look back onto them onto their path because everybody has their own story everybody has their own life to tell that is what we try to achieve to help people look back into what they have gone through and understand and realize their worth thank you malika can you put up the a1 sheet yes yes so is it visible uh the presentation uh, is, it is visible no the even poster can you yeah. put that up yeah yeah very please proceed with the questions uh very please uh, proceed with the questions i need to see some renders of facade to comment on that so but uh, yeah uh, oh, no. the, the thing is mm. this the towers you have created yes they, they look a lot like zaha hadith's chair okay why is that so that looks exactly like zaha hadith's chair turned so, into thales. a building uh, so yeah. yeah that's what I, i was going to comment that it looks awfully lot like thales by zaha hadith yeah yeah, yeah. So also Tree. where where are the floor plates inside it it's just the skin cover right Yeah so where yeah, are the exactly. floor plates and everything i mean uh, why did you guys not uh, i really see the effort all the efforts went into your conceptual part that that i can clearly see with all the sketches and how you evolved it further but somehow those were not those are not reflected in the in the designs that you have come up with okay. that's what i feel Okay 
we tried we, uh, we tried actually uh, we tried to show the details as well as you can see the structure is kind of like a cover of the building and it is made up of bamboo and very fine mesh which looks which feels like you are looking through a glass but it is not so do you think we can uh, twist bamboo like that bamboo is one of the very tensile structures but we, it, and it, also it, it very cannot flexible. be twisted like that uh, i'm pretty sure that it cannot be twisted it like that be, it cannot be it can yeah. be bent it can be heated and bent and there are things that you can do with it but then yes. you cannot uh m twist it so badly or 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 bend it not, so uh, yeah it yeah. cannot be twisted in that level yep okay it looks good it looks very good though the concept is very nice too you should have worked a bit more on your forms uh um, pardon the way Pardon? Can I? Yeah, yeah, Jibir. Yeah, the way we. Uh, sorry, I cannot put up my camera on. I'm at a site right now, so uh, pardon me for that. Uh, just to briefly overview everyone about it. Uh, the idea behind the concept behind was is to how the organic flow of a tree uh, forms the overall uh, landscape of the building. So, starting from a germination point to how the branches are seeded off. uh of a root system and forming an embryo and then building it up to a tree uh the concept of those pipes right across the whole facade was to give a feel where the constraints of the site are not minimizing the overall integrity of the building so the constraint has hard edges we wanted to put in more linear so, and organic form to it so that it can that's yeah, what we are uh, we are trying to point out here jigger that the concept is really nice and you guys really put in a lot of effort in the concept uh but somehow if you uh taking inspiration from thales was one thing and then if you evolved it further merging it with your co with, with your concept if you would have evolved it for you can always cycle back to it and evolve it further that's that's for sure uh it's a, it has the concept has a really nice potential in it but somehow that is not being reflected in the overall form or the planning that you have developed that's that's uh what my feedback here is okay okay uh thanks a lot uh group 5 so let's move on to group 6 bushra krishna akash shubhra winfred and gaurav yes so we are there great go on present your screen is my screen visible yes okay sir yes good afternoon everyone so we are group 6 and we will be presenting our uh, project uh, the name is waves on ground so uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the over, uh, overall view of the event sheet which we have prepared for the uh, to for the image of the project so let's deep dive uh, let's uh, uh, let's see what we have done in the uh, presentation so these are the conceptual sketches so before that uh, uh, before that uh, 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 we would like to tell what were the objectives of uh, uh, what we have uh, taken as a objective of our design so we have five uh, so we have taken with the five objective which are interactive and inclusive planning tribute to river uh, 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 tribute to river uh, yamuna sustainable design playful environment through kinesthetics kinesthetics means to have a experience and uh, to have a experience in which things are hiding and revealing according to as, as you move further as to improve your uh, uh, experience and the most important uh, most important iconic building which works as a image maker for the city of noida so uh, uh, so uh, let's see that what were given in the brief so uh, as uh, so the uh, brief suggested that we have to design a resort and in which we have uh, there there we have to uh, incorporate three, uh, three, uh, three different buildings and the one building which is the amenities spa multi purpose second building which is the administration restaurant and club and the th uh, and the third building which is covering most of the uh, mo uh, which is the most important part of the resort is the seven star hotel with uh, with lodging and the gazebos so 
so in the first in the first sketch we are uh, we have tried to what should be the basic planning of, uh, of the site so to the north of the site there is uh, river yamuna so uh, there are two points here that we want uh, we want the longer side of the building towards the north and south uh, south side because noida is in the composite climate and it is very essential to have a longer side towards the north and south direction because uh, there is there will be less heat gains and and uh, composite climate is and composite climates have its limitation that uh, uh, it should have south uh, south south facade is a longer facade so uh, Uh, we, uh, but we could have a rectangular shape. Uh, we could have a rectangular shape, but we have taken the elliptical shape. So, what are the advantages of the ellipti ell elliptical shape? That number one, it it will reduce the heat gains, and we can uh, we know that we have uh, uh, we have curved the edges towards this uh, uh, west uh, western eastern eastern side, which will uh, substantially uh, decrease uh, decrease the heat gains. And the another reason is that we want to go high rise because we are. we want to have a sustainable design and we don't want to cover up the whole site so we have taken and uh, the bylaws of noida suggest, uh, suggest that we can have a ground cover up to 40% but we have tried to maintain it it is in uh, it to the 25% so that's why we have a elliptical shape elliptical shape which will be uh, and noida is being in the seismic zone 5 Which is a very earthquake prone zone, so we have taken the elliptical shape, which will uh, reduce the uh, seismic effects uh, at the time of earthquakes. So, uh, in the third sketch, we can see that that we have uh, uh, on the uh, when we have the facade towards the east and west direction, we have tried to give a double skin, which will uh, which will uh, reduce the heat gains further. And uh, at the bottom of this uh, at the bottom of this sketch, we have tried to uh, we have tried to show that we want to have a single. I mean, we have different three uh, three buildings, but we want to have it integ uh, have a integration. So uh, the form should be fluid, as we uh, as the uh, as the uh, project name suggested, based on the ground. So uh, and if we talk about the roof profile, so we have uh, we have. Uh, we have taken the curved cur roof uh, which is, which is useful for the light and air ventilation as we can see in the uh, uh, topmost sketch that uh, that how uh, this uh, curved roof is helpful in maintain uh, helpful in maintaining the uh, heat gains and uh, and to have a very very good interactive planning inside this and and this is the uh, conceptual uh, conceptual form that we want to have a uh, we want to have a, uh, a curved roof but we we also want uh, fenestrations in this so we can see that, that there are different different fenestration in the building and as i uh, as i told that we want to have a integrity in the site so we want to that we have a uh, the lodging tower is very huge which is 20 floors but and the amenities uh, are like Three to four four floors high, high. So we want to have an integration of them. So we have tried to incorporate. Uh, we have tried to give a form to all the uh, to to uh, three of the building by having a similar kind of roof roof structure. So uh, this is the uh, this is the site plan uh, which uh, which uh, uh, totally tells about that we have only covered uh, almost twenty five percent of the site and rest we have. Uh, Uh, rest we have uh, left it for the uh, for the green cover so here's the uh, so here's the entrance door this is the uh, this is our uh, this is our uh, residential tower and these being the two amenities blocks and as we can see that that we have tried to incorporate the river inside our project we have tried to uh, we have tried to get the river water inside it and make a very very modernistic ghat ghat kind of architecture towards the uh, shore area as we know that no, 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 uh, there is river yamuna and and mathura uh, and mathura be, uh, being uh, almost 200 kilometers within within this range yeah. so what we have taken from the wider context is that that we have taken the ghats of mathura and we have uh, tried to put it uh, uh, try to put it here in a very very modernistic and a very very interesting uh, design format so uh, uh, we will talk about the how uh, the evolution of this uh, the, this re uh, residential tower so we have we have tried to do a elliptical tower and we have tried to twist it
but when we twisted that we uh, when we tw twisted it the, at the 90 degree so the longer facade is uh, the, uh, at the top longer facade is facing the east and west direction which is not uh, suitable for the composite climate so we have tried to integrate uh, and we told that we want to have a integrated uh, roof structure so we have tried these ribbon kind of structures which are uh, which starts from the east and west direction at the bottom and they, they are twisted like that that when the longer facade faces uh -huh. east and west directions they cover up uh, they cover up uh, they they will cover it up and they are having uh, the, uh, and these ribbon bands are uh, having the green uh, green uh, green patch like a vertical gardening and having a fenestration so that there will be no obstruction in the uh, visual vistas so uh, this is the view of resort uh, which is a residential tower and its roof form and this uh, this is the uh, and uh, uh, this is a very very fluid kind of uh, entrance gate which is made up of a steel fabrication and and it's create very interest when we uh, go to such kind of structures and it's all it's all it's also paying uh, respect to the overall mm -hmm. geometry so that we have used it like that so these are the uh, different different views in a monochromatic way that uh, 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 what, what the kind of architecture uh, we have incorporated in here, and uh, the the the, uh, the these are the pavilions kind of structure. And as we said, that the prime intention of our design is to have a sustainable design. And in sustainable, we want to have and uh, composite climate for the two months. There is a heavy rain, so we want to have a uh, uh, we we have a multi multi purpose structure, which will act as a re uh, rainwater collector and have a very uh, and have an inter uh, interesting experience near it so we have tried technology and architecture and uh, some sort of uh, uh, and uh, some sort of traditional architecture look like ja uh, jali roof and columns like fatehpur sikri and if you talk about the uh, if you talk about the uh, uh, red fort uh, those pavilions kind of structures so and these are the gazebos which we have tried to implement at the river side where we have tried to get a ghat kind of architecture in a modernist environment so these are the renders of that so as, as you can see that the, when we have uh, when we try to integrate the river into the, uh, in, into our project so we have uh, we have make different different uh, blocks in a ghat kind of architecture and put those gazebos on that so and they are interconnected to each other as we will see here, and these are the uh, seating modules, or uh, these are the seating module seating modules for the gazebos, which are also fluid in the uh, fluid in geometry. So you can see here how we have incorporated that guard, uh, that guard kind of uh, steps, and uh, we have placed gazebos, and these all are interconnected, which are creating a playful en environment. And this is the uh, last slide, uh, which is showing the overall form of the project. Thank you. Re really well put together presentation, Akash, and that's what we were expecting out of all the groups to incorporate all the basic architectural principles that we have learned so far through our college years. And I'm glad that you also put up a parking space uh, on the site as well. Uh, good work there. I really like the uh, the way you have developed the ghat, and you you instead you took the basic principles like keeping the elongated side oriented to east west in composite climates, and then shading the western side. So I really liked all those things. Um, two things that you could have improvised on a bit more. First of all, yes, was sir. the entrance gate. Yes, sir. And the second, uh, oh, I mean, uh, the planning is good. The way you have placed the gazebos on the ghat so that the gazebos don't overpower yet welcome you to come and sit inside them um, is really nice. You could have worked a bit better on the gate itself, the entrance gate, and a little bit on the facade of the tower because right now it's blocking the views, blocking all the views. It's completely shut down. So that's something that you could you could have improvised a bit further. Yes, sir. That's why we have tried to uh, get the fenestration into those ribbons. If you can see that, uh, that they are also mutually shading each other, but also having, but we are also having vistas. But we, uh, uh, that's true. That we could not 
uh, uh, work on more, more, more on th this concept that we could have a you know, we don't have a that much control on the geometry so that we can have this kind of form uh, also and we can have a very very uh, unobstructed view right and uh, i like the fact that you have replicated the uh, similar elements throughout the roads to provide the shading and the color over the theme the color theme overall is uh, coherent so that's good uh, over to you vidhi yeah i uh, akash i think your concept is really nice it is uh, like the best i have seen so far today and uh, the tower also looks very nice uh, you, the ribbons you have created are also working as uh, layering for the tower as well yes, so it is it is really nice very sustainable beautiful landscaping so i just think great work guys thank you ma'am thank you great uh let's move on forward to the seventh group that's neel ashutosh mehak rashi john and merin good afternoon so we group 7 ppt is ready is it visible yeah yes yeah yeah it is So good afternoon. We group seven. The name of the project is Duni. Duni in Sanskrit means river. So as we all know, it's one of the most eye-catchy elements regarding the site, the river. So the first thought went into incorporating the river as one of the major concept regarding the world design. So how to incorporate this into design? We came up with a concept called the flow of the river, which uh, looks upon the all the factors or the characteristics of the river, right from its origin to the branching of the river to the delta the obstacles the direction of the flow so all of these has been incorporated in order to create a parallel river on the site so when i say parallel river it's not exactly a artificial or water body in the site but instead we have tried and connected the fluidity of the entire form the branching uh, which is used in the the, uh, the zoning the uh, the different merging that comes from the base of the building so um, yeah as you can see in the slide the flow of the river is taken the fluidity is taken to be the building form the central nuclei system for zoning because we all know the uh, river merges at one point so the same concept has been used in the buildings as well and the branching of the river has been used for the entire zoning work and we know the river originates from the mountain so uh, the kind of form the entire structure looks like the something that has originated from the mountain so the major structure that is a seven star hotel it kind of have an abstraction of the mountain as its form so um, basically it's a reflection of the yamuna river that we have incorporated on the site by the use of form and the different branching the zoning and all that we have done so now let's look into the design development that we have come into so moving on to mehak so uh, talking about the design development first of all we have the basic zoning that is derived from the branching pattern of the river itself and the central nuclei as you can see in the central green part it is uh, it is acting as a central nuclei for our project which we have thought for uh, like it provides a central vista and it provides a central connection to all of the major buildings that has been placed on the site now moving on to the basic massing of the uh, building blocks so you can see there is a gradient acting like uh, the flow of the river itself so there is a gradient in height and since we have entrance from the left side so we uh, provided the highest on, at the one end of the site so that it doesn't block the uh, uh, left over side and it is like uh, provide some sort of the visual directionality to the site now coming to the form of the uh, building block so we try to carve very fluid forms because of the uh, concept itself that is the flow of the river and we have uh, used curved edges and not straight edges so that we can have an uh, uninterrupted uh, panoramic uh, view throughout the site now when we are talking about the connectivity on the site so the connectivity is derived from the branching and behavior of the river streams as we know that uh, there is single stream and it divides into uh, uh, secondary and tertiary branches so the similar approach is uh, uh, taken here in in the basic connectivity now when we talk about the vistas here uh, so uh, what we did is we try to create a central, central vista so that the uh, main uh, building block that is the seven star hotel at the uh, end of the site is 
like creating a direction direction towards it and uh, the complete project is creating a sort of a frame and then there is kinesthetics happening like we have provided this long uh, route because when uh, we are uh, having such linear structures and such big structures then and uh, they are uh, uh, pretty much uh, like we want to view it per perfectly so that we provided a long corridor so, so that we can have a certain view and when we walk towards each and every building then our view changes with time frame and we have certain uh, uh, kind of aesthetics working on the site then coming to the uh, ch channelizing the water body so what we did is we took the water body inside the site in the form of the channel that is running throughout the uh, uh, central connectivity and it is also uh, adding to the sustainability portion because we try to incorporate the passive techniques like evaporative cooling so, uh, since this is a composite climate so we require uh, we can uh, give uh, passive techniques like evaporative cooling and since we have the major direction from the river yamuna due to the microclimate of the site and apart from that we have uh, the major wind direction from northwest to southeast so when wind, wind will flow from river to ground or northwest uh, northwest uh, directions then uh, and we have perforations on those sides like uh, uh, wind uh, will pass through water channels and then it will uh, go to the building so there is some sort of evaporative cooling happening on the site yeah, so as as mek like explained we have the we have a very composite climate here in greater noida so what it does is we have extremely hot summers going up to 45 to 46 47 degrees centigrade and we have extremely cold uh, extremely cold winters going to you know uh, it also goes to 0 degree centigrade also so we have to consider those aspects while designing and de developing the site what it also does is we also taken into consideration the overall flow or overall prevailing and the wind from the river because of the microclimate because when we have a river on site we uh, face these two principles of sea breeze and land breeze and they are taken into account as it will you know affect the site in a major form and because we are having huge forms placed on the site every each and every form needs to you know correspond to the wind direction and the solar direction so we create the site is actually developed in a relay valve form the relay valve was a form that was the relay valve was actually a valve in engineering aspects which was created by nikola tesla it is a unidirectional valve which you know does not allow the water to pass in the opposite direction so it does not have any moving part in it that is the crucial thing and that's why we took that valve as a form and then we developed it in, in the circulation part of the site so that there is no hindrances and no clusters and intersections formed in between moving on to the moving on to new the site as you can notice through the concept of using a nuclei and the branching of rimbus you can overall you can see the overall um a plan of the site it is divided into six blocks namely the main tower the clubhouse as well as the restaurant and bar and the separate amenities block as well as the admin block it is using the concept of creating a central nuclei and branching you can see how each building is connected using a single pathway and also we have proposed the form of riverfront development the way which is a promenade that we have created for which accesses the site directly also over here you will be able to see the abstractions of how each member how we have abstracted each member and how it coincides with the overall final form of the structure coming to the site development as you can as how ashutosh mentioned the railway wall that is present over here and how this how the main hotel tower coincides with the form with the concept that we try to use which is the shape of a mountain so when we come to the main building the main attention of our site the hotel tower we see that the plan only the plan of the tower itself is not very you know regular polygon in shape so when when we see it is actually created in such a manner to reduce the amount of vortexes that are created around in and around the site and the tower is rotated in such a manner just to counter those vortexes that will be created when the height is risen we have an we have an outer skin that is inspired from the al bahar tower which actually you know restricts all the heat that is coming from the southern side of the site but it also allows the views in the warana shape that is we have actually unified all of our site in with the warana shape 
so that actually gives us the opening and perforation so it does not feel very enclosed and crotchy and it actually gives it actually plays in the overall harmony of the site moving Uh, so the next building is that of the middle buildings. So the initial idea of the form was to create something that would merge into the uh, the central nuclei, and then it was later on supported by different sustainability factor. For example, the balconies that comes out of the building though supports the green roof that the area will have a green roof structure. And then um, talking about a sudden facade in terms of another. point regarding the sustainability is that of the energy conservation so talking about that we have a curved structure in the front uh, that kind of adds up to the southern facade treatment where uh, we uh, it's tilted to a 30 degree south so that it, uh, at those portions we can have a combination of both glass and the solar panels so that the building can create the energy of its own and when it comes to sustainability another important factor is that of the use of the materials so when we had a study on the vernacular materials so we um, came up with something called the core which is more like a clay like structure it's basically the wet earth with, when compared to the straw it, it gives us a log size structure which is called as a core and it can be molded at any shape and size and it's aesthetically pleasing so all this can be used to create the uh, this you know the building so and because it is made of both natural resources uh, it uh, the, the it has a very low impact environmental footprint and therefore it adds up to the sustainability of the entire building and um, another factor that comes with the sustainability uh, is one thing we have to preserve the already um, existing vegetation that is preserving the natural resources so for that we have tried and created at each building level we have open things so that it preserves the natural vegetation in the site that is about the natural resources and about the water resources which is one of the major structure major, major attraction in the site we have actually tried and give given an offset from the building and the river so that it doesn't really have a negative impact on the water resources so that's about the uh, and again another consideration regarding the sustainability is the rainwater harvesting and for that uh, rainwater harvesting it's not a mere um, tunnel a plastic tunnel that we have given in order to collect the water but instead we have incorporated the whole thing into the landscape part as you can see there's a fountain in the front so and also a water channel that is running all throughout the building so all of this uh, Uh, adds it to the rainwater harvesting and sustainability also using it as a landscape element now mehr now coming to the uh, other part of the site now these two blocks are have the admin and amenities portion since these are the first block on the site when we'll enter the site so what we try to do is we try to derive a form that is welcoming in itself so we derive this form from two things that is one the flow of the river the uh, river that is happening all through the site and second uh, the welcoming aspect so we modeled a very fluid building on uh, rhino itself and we tried to give it a parametric effect in on the form of boron oil since we have composite climate so it is a basic requ requirement to have ventilation but we can't uh, give too much of an opening since it it uh, might bring hot air so we tried to, to uh, create a um, boron oil uh, pattern that is tweaked with the use of a curve and it is uh, like going uh, in a flowy uh, in a flowy manner all through the building facade also uh, to cut the south uh, uh, sun we have tilted the building from behind on a 30 degree angle so that uh, we can we don't have a direct sunlight on the facade itself and it is a uh, slightly inclined apart from uh, that the building itself is creating a frame that when we uh, are standing in front of it so not only the uh, uh, opening uh, or the doors are welcoming but the whole building is creating a sort of a frame so that uh, it welcomes us inside the building and uh, it uh, it is uh, very visually welcoming and it attracts the user uh, user experience also and like we uh, and uh, then there is certain aspect of uh, functionality and materiality happening in this these kind of buildings so we try to in uh, like uh, balance those with the central courtyard as you can see so uh, what we this what we thought that we can have uh, a like central opening through which we can have like natural light inside the building so, uh, we are going to have floor plates like floor plates inside it so uh, the floor plates will channelize the uh, sunlight throughout the building in a manner such that it uh, it acquires the natural wind and natural sunlight uh, throughout the day itself to the uh, 
coming to the central plaza area, this is the central nuclei as mentioned that connects the, each individual building separately. Over here, as mentioned, this is the river, this is the channel that we have provided around the pathway to show the connectivity between the, the river and the structures itself. And as you can see, each building very organically acts, connects to the all buildings together through the central plaza. This is the overall grasshopper script that we have used. Yeah, thank you. And this is our final sheet that we have. Great. The, the sheet looks really great. The forms are really interesting. Um, I have one question for you. So why why did we not take the river in account when it comes to maximizing the views or developing the riverfront itself? So why did you guys not do anything about the river? I mean, right now the site is uh, capable on its own. It, it is not, uh, it, do, it does not direct the, the, one of the major advantages of this site wa was that it had a river bank. So why was that not utilized uh, in the design process? Sir, we actually have a riverfront style de development on the side of the river. We actually have steps that are flowing into the river so that we we didn't want to hinder the flow of the river itself by like, bringing in the river, like anything doing with that. But, but getting inspired from the riverfront style development, we actually gave the seatings around the river so that people can go and enjoy that. As a, as a place of home. So do you do, do you have some visuals of it as well? So also there's a sustainability aspect of not having a negative impact on the water resources. So we have offsetted the building. Instead, we have just given a riverfront seating development instead of the buildings. The buildings comes inside. It is offsetted for the sustainability aspect that it, it doesn't really give a negative impact on the uh, water resources that's already there. Okay, so what... what uh, what is this building? What is the function of this? I believe this is the river, right? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what is the function of this building here? I mean, this is, uh, the, this is the restaurant slash bar with the other amenities, and this is the clubhouse present here. Sir. And this one? This is the main uh, admin block. Okay. And the the right one uh, in the front? Uh, this is the amenities block, like the multi-purpose halls and all. Okay, so again, this is something that if if this uh, this amenities block was re I mean the position of the amenities block was replaced with the admins block, and then restaurant and the admin block itself could have been oriented with with some glass facade or probably some openings towards the riverside, because it's already north, so that would have maximized the views and also would have would have been a pleasing experience within itself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but overall, uh, and okay. also uh, one one more input that I would like to give is when you're using Vornoy, it is very coherent right now. It reflects on each of the buildings. If only you used it on the pathways as well, it would have just uh, took it to another level. So the flooring of the uh, of the pathways, if you could have uh, used a Vornoy in that as well, it would have or the landscaping, the green portion that you have the the green belt that you have left on the side unbuilt if that had some Voronoi pattern going on within itself as well it would have taken it to another level but yeah really really nice effort really interesting forms over to you Vidhi yeah first of all guys it was a very good presentation and uh, all the forms you have developed are very futuristic looks great uh, the thing is I think you could have worked a bit more on your landscape too other than that, uh, just on the sustainable point as well, all the buildings along with the site are uh, maintaining a buffering point that is creating a chimney effect for all the buildings. That is really nice. That helps in dissipating heat and uh, creating a microclimate of your res of your own resort. So that is the best thing of your concept. The other thing is, uh, Yes, uh, the views should have been tilted towards the riverside for at least the restaurants and the areas for other amenities. The other than that, I think everything looks great. And yes, the, that wooden deck you have created for the landscape, that, that does not go very well with the uh, rest of your buildings. But other than that, uh, it is a very nice project. You have done a very nice job in like a week. Great. Thank you. So uh, Thank moving you. on to 
the eighth group that's samriddhi shubham ritik ashish tejashree and niharika so good morning everyone uh, my screen is visible or not yeah you are visible okay so good morning everyone uh, this is ashish chopra and uh, presentation partner niharika agrawal so we have we have got, got a great opportunity for this resort uh, design com, uh, complex actually so moving forward uh, in, and i am not taking too much time on the uh, introduction so there is a site we have given that is of 80000 square meter approx and we have a great opportunity that uh, on the one side of the uh, site we have a uh, 24 meter wide road and on uh, another side we have a uh, yumna river there is a water body as well so it is it's a uh, best uh, site proposal we can give for the resort actually so we have done the site analysis basically for the uh, pr- proposing a main building blocks how, how the uh, blocks or should be oriented there is a uh, wind direction is prominent wind direction is from north to south uh, north east to south west actually and uh, the sun path is uh, moving from as you know uh, east to west so there is a, a huge part uh, that that would be coming around the uh, uh, in front of the uh, sun there is a, a building actually so we have taken out the concept that uh, the water waves should be the uh, parametric facade design so we have taken a concept from water waves uh, as a water waves uh, uh, as the waves intersection of the waves these points so do we uh, we can easily take out these modules as a glass uh, glass operating as our building facade so we are gen- we are uh, generally uh, we are trying to uh capture these things on the building facade actually so uh, as well as we have to we also are looking for the vernacular architecture and their construction techniques so moving forward to the how uh, our building is evolved and how it is conceptualized so firstly initially start building a mass so we don't think we don't prefer to uh, so that there is a small uh, small area of the chunk that should be a tall building uh, we need such a building that should have largest span just because we have a river front in, in one side so we just uh, take a building mass and we just curve in the uh, curved the uh, building in the z uh, y, y direction and the convex uh, part uh, we have taken through the taken to, towards the entry of the uh, while we are ent- entering the site and concave part we have taken to the river front actually so that uh, the the visibility can be uh, maximized the vis- visible angle can be maximized through this uh, concave part so we have also identified the what are the wind directions over here we have uh, we have designed we have proposed the two or three punctures uh, that would be uh, work as a that would be uh, hello yeah go on go on yes we have we have taken these punctures as well that we work work as a tm uh, so that the wind can flow easily from uh, along this building that would re- uh, reduce the uh, uh, energy consumption as well so we have taken out uh, these uh, as we as we also have to decide a gym and uh, uh, swimming pool as well these amenities for the water block so we have taken a tensile structures that would uh, look like but little look, look look like the tensile uh, mesh surface structure actually so we have taken up this a conceptual stage of this uh, uh, site uh, what we have can try to do so there is a entry we can enter from this side and there is the exit so along with uh, along with this path we have placed uh, the, uh, our main building block which have hotel rooms restaurant bars and club house and admin area and these two blocks are for another amenities that uh, uh, gym or we can say that for uh, swimming pool actually just because we uh, we uh, want to give a greater span without having uh, any column any between it so we have designed the mesh structure and tensile structure in between two these three uh, two, uh, two blocks and we have placed a main building blocks here so that there can be maximum maximum uh, visibility can be captured from this river front side and the minimum uh, visibility can capture from the uh, front side actually so we have uh, also we have a uh, place the uh, gazebos like here just because there is a northeast uh, sun direction so there there could be a uh, easily uh, uh, best place uh, the, where the sun cannot where the uh, temperature could be low down easily so we can easily justify that this uh, this building could easily uh, relate as a low consumption building 
so conceptual evolution as we talk about there is a entry and there is an exit and we have taken about these uh, mesh uh, tensile structures over here that we, that can easily uh, emitted without any obstruction of the columns in between it and we have taken these uh, building block and in between we have uh, given two uh, huge punctures which we left as a which we left as a uh, atrium as well they, they, that could easily uh, let the uh, wind should be passed from this side we we have given the large span over here that could be easily uh, maximize the view angle of the uh, for the river side so we have given two service cords over here and there is a for entry and we have given all the things that could be easily um, mi minimize the, the energy consumption of the, that building as we can see from the section of this conceptual section of this building these are two service cords and here we have given uh, amenities that that could be easily uh, done for example there is uh, we have given in north east direction we have given room, rooms as well uh, in the southwest uh, part where the heat temperature is more where the light could could come more and they will there could be a huge uh, temperature uh, in this area so we have uh, proposed uh, these amenities over here that's why they we have uh, given service staircase and uh, lifts over here and all the toilets all toilets on the south uh, west southwest facade so taking up this section we have uh, all we have taken then taken the tensile structure over here so that we can easily uh, amenduate the uh, swimming pool and other maintain services in these blocks so we have taken also taken about care about the vernacular architecture and construction techniques so in the entire delhi or northern region of this uh, delhi and cr we can easily see in this type of particular type of construction is there that's why this is called uh, rcc city as well so this is a vernacular uh, common vernacular and construction technique it this it is using in the current situation of the delhi ncr or greater noida so we have taken this concept as well so we have taken this structure as uh, our in internal building and in internal building plates and a uh, structure only we have given a parametric facade over there so that we can easily Uh, play with the how we can easily uh, maximize or minimize the energy consumptions over here, or how is or how can we we uh, minimize the uh, light we can, what we can uh, want to give to our uh, give to our building. So these are the sections uh, which uh, which I am talking about. These are section conceptual section. This is the whole same process. All conceptual techniques are there, and in in a uh, out of facades we have given a parametric facade. This uh, this thing type of thing we can we are proposing over here. so wherever we want uh, less uh, sunlight to be pass through uh, is there any room or we want that uh, this should be a temperature different temperature different should be there so we have proposed small modules over here so where we have in this facade we want that uh, this should be a huge openings uh, just, just because this uh, north east sunlight we want to uh, let in come in uh, rooms so we have given huge uh, glass panes over this facade and we have given uh, less uh, glass uh, spreads or mod uh, modules over this uh, over this facade this is actually a basic uh, parametric facade designing which we have proposed that could be easily uh, easily constructible at the site only uh, that we have thinking of that uh, we should we have to design such parametric design for our building that could be yes uh, but not 100% that would be about 80 to 70% which is visible to construct over there So this is the final uh, rendering we have done over here. These are the two. These are two blocks we are talking about, uh, which is uh, which is tensile structures, which going to be easily maximize the usage and maximize the space availability in this area. Just because we don't cater any, want any, uh, want any uh, column uh, obstruction in between these uh, two ends. We want a clear span that should be higher uh, or wide, as uh, for example in restaurants, bars, or we can easily say that in. Uh, in uh, indoor games or uh, in uh, swimming pool areas we can easily give the those type of structures over here so this type of this uh, this part uh, whole part uh, just below the building is actually working as a restaurant area as an admin area so these two towers are uh, actually dealing with the service uh, service courts and these uh, three punctures are actually dealing with the uh, atriums so that can easily be minimize the energy consumption of the building so that's i am uh, talking uh, we have uh, taken a forward of this uh facade yes that's all am i audible okay i'm 
Ashish, I think the concept and the atriums you have created, the wind flow, everything looks great. Everything is fine. But uh, if you could have uh, kept these smaller units a bit uh, a, a, from a bit dis distant to the main tower, it would look a bit better than this. Don't you think that? Hello. Yes, ma'am. I am audible. I am listening. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think the concept, the landscaping, la landscaping and the sustainability, everything is fine. Uh, I just wish I could see a bit more renders of the entire site as well. So I could see yes. the circulation too. And uh, other than that, I think it's fine. Or what do you think, Chinmay? Yeah, so I feel that uh, a bit more, since, since it's a resort that we are developing, and uh, and not a hotel in in the middle of a city so you could have uh, gone a bit extra mile you know in designing some landscaping elements that actually encourage the users to navigate through the site and actually use the riverfront and uh, it's a really big site so uh, yeah so instead of having them very close by and again the tri the these openings that you see uh, the openings that are designed here, uh, they won't work out very nicely in the end, I believe. So, yet yeah, things like these could have been taken into consideration, wherein you could, uh, instead of having everything consolidated into one, was scattered around a bit, and then you regulated the site movement uh, and controlled the site movement, like like many others did. But overall, in a very interesting form, and the atriums that you have created, the perforations that you have created in the building you could develop this form into something else as well so uh, keep developing keep improvising this further even after the competition ashish thanks for the compliment alex great uh, let's move on to the second last group for today that's group 9 anandit anusha rajat shreya r kiran and nazar noor mohammed uh, is my screen visible yeah So uh, the name of a resort is uh, Akarshan, which is in context to our design, uh, the concept design. So our concept basically, uh, our basic approach to our design revolved around the dichotomy of the old and forgotten and the new and upcoming eras in the realm of architecture. We wanted to create a contrast between these two very opposite things and bring out a unified design. So uh, basically give a fresh and new parametric interpretation to the old Indian temples and their architecture through our design. So I'll hand it over to Anushka to explain the basic site zoning of a site according to a concept. Please turn on your webcams as well. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, actually, I am um, in my office space, so can't uh, turn on my webcam. So I'll continue. Um, talking uh, a bit more uh, again about the concept, a basic idea was to revolve around the dichotomy of the old and the forgotten uh, and new and upcoming eras. The main motive of giving rise to this parametric design was to evolve the uh, old and the forgotten, giving them a fresh new futuristic approach, keeping the main concept of our, uh, temple architecture in mind stagnant. Now, focusing more on to the site context, we have adjoining Yamuna River on one side, which gives the utmost serenity to the entire site area. The site opens up with the Adha Mandala and the journey continues till the Garbhagriya. As we enter the site, we have parking on, the, uh, on one side and the restaurant come cafe on the other side. Um, as we uh, take a journey inside, we have um, the two gazebos um, placed on the opposite sides. There is an adjoining path which focuses as to replicate the Adha Mandala. That is the path which we are continuing um, towards the hotel block. Going a bit ahead, we have the admin block followed by the colonnades replicating the mandapas. Beyond the Mandapas, the uh, there, is, there lies a beautiful courtyard, again, incorporation of the traditional element within the space. Um, so yeah, um, 
one finally reaches the garbhagriha that is the core element of the space highlighting the hotel block uh, so that is it uh, and we have the water body and the uh, main landscape elements uh, placed on the other side uh, which incorporates the spa element uh, yeah that's it now over to shreya highlighting the uh, form evolution um so we understanding what the uh, understanding the entire concept we try to bring in the contemporary design from uh, traditional languages of indian architecture so considering the um, basic form of a gopuram on top of a garbhagriha uh, conceptualizing it as a hotel we took the basic form which is the outline of the form and uh, twisted the form and brought in the similar architectural uh, elements of of the gopuram to the hotel in the facade system um and using the um uh, uh, the uh, garbhagriha as a pedestal format in the hotel um next yeah uh, and so then we come to the next major uh, derivation of our entire site was the step uh, Uh, the kund that we took uh, inspiration from uh, and the arches so like uh, the arches from the temple architecture uh, were uh, modified and and uh, gave you the similar visual sensation uh, by creating co uh, columns and colonnades uh, of of uh, of the sort and creating the similar uh, stepped cultural format which brings people together the interaction the the view and the uh, the holistic sense of a stepped well is brought by uh, by simplifying the form of the stepped well and putting it towards the water bodies um next yeah uh so this is the seven uh, this is the hotel like the rendered hotel and then the with the stepped wells uh the restaurant area with the colonnades uh the spa uh and the step well towards the water in itna so it, it creates that and the colonnades creating the sense of arches and i uh, will show the uh, video Yeah. Um. That's it. Great. Uh, let's start with Vidhi. Vidhi, if you have some questions. Yeah. Uh, I think, guys, it is very authentic that you started working with the temple architecture. Uh, it would look great with Yamuna as well. It is very different. Uh, I think the tower looks very different from the rest of your design. On the side, the other blocks, and I would really love to see these blo uh, the tower block. uh to also to be created with 
some temple architecture more arches and more columns should have been used in the smaller units also so i think if you would have used a bit more temple the concept you have created you should have used that a bit more so that it could have accentuated the temple ghat feeling on the entire site right um if i add on here so uh, multiple things there were gazebos they they look off the context i mean uh, your concept is really nice and the way you evolved your form of the tower was very nice but all the temples have these mathematical calculations through which the stepping on on the roofing is created of each of these temp uh, temples or the gopuram is created so maybe some sort of uh, reduction in scale as we moved up in in height on the tower that could have you know uh, gave you an edge that could have represented the the tower thing it's uh, the temple gopuram thing itself uh, yeah that's why uh, it, the the tower looked a bit bland the concept is really or very original and it has a lot of potential and you guys should definitely work on it to evolve this a bit further uh, the 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 feeling of ghat and how you connected with it with akshardham and since it's uh, yamuna river we uh, we have religious sentiments towards the river so that complements uh, the whole thing but the uh, the thing is the concept did not very much transform into the designs so that's something wherein you need to work a little and evolve it further yeah. great presentation guys uh, really like the video let's move on to the last group for today that's group 10 vaibhav uh, shivansh deeksha arsh shivani and akshara hello sir hello ma'am good afternoon everyone yes you can see the screen is it visible yeah yeah, yeah. okay so good afternoon everyone Uh, this is group 10 and uh, for the competition you are asked to design a hotel or a, a, a basically a, 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 a recreational zone so let's start with the presentation next slide one yeah, yeah. so the floating leaf So the concept uh, concept was to derive a kinetic facade that incorporate the basic principles of sustainability, maximizing daylight, and the heat gain and all. And the basic uh, click was to amalgamate amalgamate all the uh, built area with the landscape. Like that's what we uh, what we believe that we miss out. That the building is a separate entity and the landscape is a separate entity. So we are we are try to like incorporate both of them together. Maybe in forms of the terrace gardens, or maybe in form uh, in the uh, procedure of using forms. Okay, the next slide. So, uh, for the site planning, the basic thing was the the site was uh, in the sandwich between the Yamuna River and the 24 meter wide road in the proximity of Noida. So it's a very hustle bustle city. There there are a lot of population and a lot of high rise building going all around. So we just try to make a buffer area and just try to provide a separate uh, recreational zone for everyone whosoever is coming. That's why the orange part, that's the central part you see, that's oriented in the eastern direction, facing the north, and the Yamuna River is being there. It's the amalgamation of all the three towers consisting of the seven star hotel, uh, the the amenities, and the bar and the lounge. So all these areas are together in this uh, central part. other than that we have tried to provide a uh, separate landscape entities in the form of oatis and the ghats at near the river then some sitting informal sitting spaces formal sitting spaces and all those things so the basic thing was to provide a journey so when uh, so the site opens up to a user and when when a user enters the site he or she sees a built mass and when he crosses through that he sees an open area so the basic thing was in this today's time when everyone is like told what to do in our the design focuses on providing several options for the user or the several paths to the user from which he or she can choose where he wants to go 
that that's for the basic thing uh, for the site plan and also all the uh, parking thing and the services amenities were given to the right bottom part of the plan in the southern part so in order to uh, so that all the shading is there and there is not much of a vehicular traffic within the site all the internal passages are uh, pedestrian and all the vehicular entries are restricted to the edge of the site even for the fire and for the parking every services are in the periphery of the site and the site opens up directly to the river every views every orientation every activity that's happening it's in uh, amalgamation with the water next slide please so that's a site plan uh, site plan uh, the first part is the entrance from the road 24 meter wide road and the the, the user is welcome in the form of a small sculpture like further we're going to discuss how the sculpture originates how the form of the sculpture originated now the next there? part the next part was the 4 5 and 6 the main building block in the 5 1 is a seven star hotel it's a right a uh, place at the very south so that every amenity every landscape part that's there in the side is being shielded uh, with the height of that block then the fourth and fifth one is the clubhouse and the gym spa and the hotel block other than that the site is open for all the landscape activities and all the general activities through the site also the uh, all the blocks are been uplifted uh, a three floor like given a triple floor height triple floor clear story height is given below 4 5 and 6 block which acts as a community space for ev everyone so it's a sh uh, shaded yet open space uh, for all the communal activities that's going on uh, with pergolas in the form of the uh, perforation that's been done in the form and also that form uh, in uh, amalgamates all the three built form okay next slide yeah babu yes uh, i would also like to add that uh, in the plan uh, as uh, shivansh has mentioned along with sculpture and the three blocks and the parking area so also there is a uh, inclusion of the uh, amphitheater the walkway pavilion the uh, 12 is a swimming pool which is there there are gazebos uh, near the swimming pool and also it's kind of a ghat uh, kind of created around uh, the view point uh, very near to the river yamuna uh, which is shown in 11 uh, you can look at that and in uh, in the parking which is given above that there is a spillo space so that from parking you can come into the spillo space and there is a second entrance which can happen to the main resort or the pedestrian entrance which is there is from the sculpture part in the second so here you can go so the the overlapping uh, pavilions which are given that becomes the buffer spaces and how did we originate with this plan so coming on to that the concept of five elements of nature so as we all know the basic uh, five elements is what all matters the panch mahabhutas which inherit the properties of earth water fire wind space and the subtlest is the space and grossets in earth with every perspective sense the design actually we started with the basic concept this was more about a uh, sense of calmness uh, getting away from the hustle bustle lifestyle of the greater noida and giving a better way and this could be helped through the nature so we designed various parts each uh, single part depicted one of the main built structure or the landscaping on our side so as you can see first is the space the main uh, building block for the resort uh, which is the seven star uh, hotel lounging amenities all three blocks are varied in heights but are derived from the abstraction of the element of space uh, below uh, there is a pavilion which we have created which dip, which is originated from the form of water which is the second element uh, the main sculpture which we are talking about in the entrance that becomes uh, originated from the fireball which we are thinking about then we have the two spillo spaces the urban settings kind of a gazebo derived from the earth and the wind so these were the five abstractions from the elements of nature five elements and this is how the form evolution happened so basically we are thinking of having a central core which can act as an atrium 
so then uh, extruding it up and then rotating in such a manner that one part of it becomes a shade area for the um, second area and in this in this manner one part gets shaded so these can be uh, the parts in which uh, there are spaces uh, like uh, meeting rooms and everything where uh, less uh, connection from that can happen if we give a multi purpose hall over there as well and then adding a facade treatment a mesh kind of a thing and then uh, uh, combining it together and same with the below pavilion for the main structure so uh, originating from the waves and then giving a tensile uh, support to it and then creating perforations over it which could then result into a picture like this so together they make a flower which is an important part of the biosystem functioning as a temporary habitat for the guest all over the resort so yeah akansha yes you can take over yeah so like adding to what vibhav said like say, uh, how we developed this tower structure uh, since we have a main pavilion st uh, structure below so like uh, we wanted to give the indirect lighting to the um, in inward area so that is why we ev evolved the form as you know we have it narrow in the bottom and as it goes up uh, the hierarchy uh, it broadens so that uh, we get uh, shading for the below um, ground so so this is the you know the entry pavilion and the uh, element that depicted the fire so that it uh, the, it's the narrow road that opens into the uh, larger pavilions so these are the pavilion structures where you know it's a community space so it's like a breakout space for the people uh, from the uh, main structure so it's like uh, they have an indirect lighting it's like it the, you don't get a direct lighting or um, any um, sun hot sun so we have created a structure that you know provides us an indirect lighting and also it uh, gives us a free a space in nature so uh, we have used the plates to you know cover the sky and also create as an entrance so you see the areas where it is opened and there are areas where it touches the ground so that is because we want to cover the structure but not fully but partially open it to the other areas so we have created a structure um, and it also gives the feeling of the false ceiling kind of thing which is happening so that is the one added feature to the pavilion so this was the main uh, view from uh, if you have a view from yamuna river so this is the swimming pool and these are the uh, three main structures so we have small gazebos over here near the swimming pool so uh, they 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 are again breakout spaces like uh, not only the pavilion acts as or you know a gathering space but we wanted to give a lot more like uh, a walkway pavilion and other structures so that we can you know, play with the uh, forms in our uh, site and also you know uh, create an interaction and you know it uh, like it makes the user want to go inside and explore the areas so next so this is how you know the pavilion of one structure uh, communicates with the other so like uh, the uh, closest the envelope closest to the town and then uh, between the two pavilion areas it just opens the flap next yeah. um ash Yeah, hello. Hi. Yeah. So this was basically uh, an installment. Basically, it created an idea of a space. So in between there is a tree with metallic circles as leaves. So at each angle you get a different view of the tree. So basically, if you look uh, from one side, you will see an image forming because the uh, uh, lines are overlapping. So basically, there's an a different image from every angle so it entices you to go inside the installation to look around to see what's there inside there and this pillow a pillow space actually kind uh, kind of act as a buffer space from the parking and creates a second entrance to the main structure this is the view of the resort tower uh, the walkway pavilion uh, through which uh, in the end you can reach out to the near to the yamuna river and have the weaving point uh, where the ghats are all located step well so this is the urban setting which we are thought of 
creating a play area for the uh, people and also when people bring in their kids so this could act as a play area as well and people can perform this can act as a multi purpose uh, open space and this is the bird eye view which uh, mainly talks about how each element is kind of a different with each other uh, all five elements stand out of its own but the uh, but the elements like amphitheater the ghat the swimming pool also kind of correlates to each other and uh, amalgamate together and gel very good so this is about how the aspiration of the designer so life is a journey and we need to appreciate that the design evolves how we want to pace out in his or her journey the design unfolds as the user moves with varying options or path that can take and also provide a sense of self confidence merely the fact that he can choose his own path all the surfaces were curvilinear so there is a peace of mind and also it uh, provides a sense of relief so yes yeah, so this is the uh, scripts uh, screenshots of the all individual uh, elements the main building and how a uh, pavilion was then added to it then the entrance sculpture the urban sitting walkway pavilion scripts and this was the a final poster thank you great vidhi let's start with you yeah uh i think the best thing is that uh your design looks like you understand it right you are understanding what you are making so there is a soul in the design that's the best thing of your design i think and i think all the units are very nicely placed on the side the landscaping is very nice uh i love the form evolution you guys have done very creative and the pavilions with pergolas and perforations are also creating a very beautiful light movement in it so i think overall it would be a very nice resort to live in so great guys really nice Thank good you, and uh, if i add on here uh, the the structures are really very complex and there are structures of multiple uh, scales and yet nothing overpowers the other so yeah. that's the beauty of this particular design that i would like to appreciate good work guys a little more detailing on the tower itself the glass the glass part of the tower could have been done and uh, i have to provide some critical feedback here so that there is a room for improvement um i personally did not like the uh, this this element very much although it it went well with the site it gelled in very nicely but uh, not a very big fan of this particular thing but overall you guys uh, did a justice to the design and good work team so just to add about the point which you mentioned that that was not very well going with it so actually what the basic thing of adding that was uh, like creating a play area for the children which will get attracted to the color which is vibrant over the surface given and the below it has a blocks kind of a structure so there is a kind of different lighting the detail part which we have been shown but that would attract the children and also that corner can be all surrounded for the people coming with a family so right so it was basically a me space kind of thing like each and every one like it's a plural landscape it has a plural landscape there are people from each and every part from noida it's not only the people from noida it's people comes from every part so we thought ki that was a space that each and every one can use according to itself like we are not forcing that you have to go on the roof part you have to go through the structure it's like if you want to you 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 can use that structure according to you it's upon upon your mood so basically each and every structure that we made it was keeping in the mind keeping in mind the user ki how the user could in various aspects use that structure at various times of the day so giving the multiple options like the walkway pavilion which we mentioned so the you can take a route from there as well and also if you want you can go through the swimming pool as well through the guards and then enter the spaces you want so giving different options according we know that the variety of people like they choose where they want to go so not restricting to just focusing on one or two parts but giving them many options so that was Yeah. So, similarly for the other structures sorry similarly for the other structures as well for the spillover space and the central space 
द मेन मोटो ऑफ लाइक डिजाइनिंग दो स्पेसिस वर लाइक की थ्रू द टाइम दे विल बी अ वेरिंग शेड एंड शेडो so that will affect the mood of the user like at the daytime the shade and shadow will be different at the evening it will be different so each and every space has that quality of of having a dynamic that like they have a dynamic quality in itself not no none of the structure is static so the time it changes and it changes the quality of that space so a resort is not a static thing in totality it's a dynamic thing and so anything that's placed to the uh, place very near to the river uh shouldn't be static in nature as well yes yeah okay so the other thing i wanted to add about that uh, urban seating which you said was that uh, we wanted to create an area which connects directly to the uh, yamuna river so uh, we haven't provided seatings as such near the yamuna river so like if we provide normal seatings over there uh, you can't you know uh, connect with the river so we provided a free from structure where you can sit you can you know you can just go through those structure varying height connect. differences yeah thank you great thank you uh, well overall great presentation and i would like to congratulate all the groups for working hard and uh, you know making it a successful competition and there were some really nice concepts and some forms that were explored throughout the competition and i'm sure that uh, by just looking at the designs of other people as well it gave you some sort of inspiration how you can evolve the things that you have learned so far so uh, we'll break for lunch and after lunch we'll we'll come back with the results so uh, the results would be compiled up till then and for the people watching us on youtube uh, it was all the things that you see the participants that they have developed is a result of a four day workshop and and a week that was given to them for for preparation of this competition so uh, i i believe 90% or most of them did not have an understanding or a working knowledge of parametric architecture so they evolved uh, from that stage so we began from 1st october and up till 5th october we evolved from the very beginner stage to intermediate stage we learned what parametric architecture and computational design is what is form finding how we can use various tools to do the form finding and then a week was given for this particular design exercise and and obviously there was not a constraint of budget or structural practical ability and applicability so all the and and what materials are going to be used so all these things were kept aside just to make the um, uh, participants think outside the box and that they clearly did so well done kudos to you all so uh, if people on youtube you want to know more about the workshops you can visit equimdesigns.com to know more about the uh, this particular workshop that's called parametrize or an advanced workshop on eco urban analysis that's ai urbanized and uh, we'll begin in exactly half an hour from now that's 2 pm uh, with the declaration of winners and there would then be a closing lecture on on digital fabrication good work guys thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir